Hi everyone, my name is Nick and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up branching for your Microsoft Forms. And this is incredibly useful if you have conditional questions um, where the answer to that question may lead to a different set of questions. Um, if this is useful to you guys, you know what to do. Um, and with all that said, let's jump on over to the desktop. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is actually navigate to office.com and log in. And um, once you've logged in, uh, you want to find your Microsoft Forms app. Um, where mine is just here, but it'll be somewhere within this section for yourself. Once you have that uh, opened, um, it'll open up in a new tab like this one here. Um, what we want to do now is actually create a new form. Um, so I'm just going to create a new form um, from scratch. And we're just going to call this um, branching, I think is probably the easiest uh, way to describe my form. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is um, add a new question. So I'm going to go for a multiple choice question um, and I'm going to call this question one. Um, and then I've got option one and option two. And I'm going to just leave that quite basic, um, but obviously you can make these as um, detailed as you need. Okay. Um, the main thing, I guess, really is that you, you know you lead in with um, the structure that's going to dictate how the form flows through. Um, so obviously, when you create a form with branching like this, um, or with branching as an intention, you're more than likely having an intention to actually push this into Microsoft Flow, um, so you can do something with the data. Um, so just consider how you want to structure it out before you start. Um, and I'm only really going to go through a very basic um, tutorial version on how to create this branching. Okay, so. I'm going to keep this as simple. So question one with option one and option two as the two options. Okay, so I'm going to add a new um, multiple choice. Okay, um, uh, yeah, so new multiple choice. This time we're going to have um, option one, and then I'm going to say um, let's say red and green. Okay, so two colors from option one. Um, then what we want to do is actually add an additional option here. Um, so this will be option two in our case. Okay. Um, and then this might be uh, yellow and I think of another color. Um, let's go white. Okay. Um, so the main thing that you have to consider or, or to understand is with question one, um, we have two options. Okay, so each option has to lead somewhere for branching to work correctly. Okay, um, or at least um, you're going to want to have uh, at least a branch for each option if you really want to utilize um, the form to its you know maximum potential. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to have a branch for each exact uh, option, but I would probably recommend that you do it that way. So what we've done here, question one, two options. Each option then has a different set of criteria or different um, selection boxes, right? Okay, so what you want to do now is actually add a branch, right? So option one goes to the option one, branch and option two goes to our option two branch. What we want to do is select question one from the ellipsis or the more options here, give that a click and then go add branch. Now look, this opens up the branching section um, or branching options, right? So we have our questions and then we can see when this is selected, it can go somewhere. And when this is selected, it can go somewhere else. So what we're going to do is select option one. So when that is selected, it goes to option one. And when option two is selected, it will go to option two. Okay, now we can come back out and preview. Now what we can do is click on option one and then we can see that actually it's opening up both option uh, one and option two. But if I click option two, it's only opening up option two. So there's something not quite working within our branching here. So let's go back and fix that. So what we want to do is actually come back into our branching. Um, so we go back into add branching here. Um, and what we can notice here is a, is a couple of things, right? Um, when we structured out our branching, what we didn't do was tell um, what's going to happen or tell Microsoft Forms what's going to happen um, with 
option one and option two when those options are selected. Um, so what we will need to do here is actually come in here, right? So option one is not to go to next, but instead go to the end of form or the end of form or lead on to another set of questions, right? Um, the reason for this is you need to basically tell uh, Microsoft Forms that option one does not lead to option two, right? So um, in this complete and utter branching scenario, um, we are doing two different uh, sets of questions based on the answer of question one, okay? Um, what we can't have is option one leading to option two because then you're gonna have a crossover. Um, so hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go back into our preview, I can click on option one. Now it's only showing us option one. If I click on option two, it's only showing us option two, and then it lets us submit. Okay, so if I go back again, um, and what we can now do is actually add a couple extra criteria in here. So if I now add um, a rating, say, um, and this is um, option two, rating, and it could be out of five stars and we have other options. I'm just going to leave it um, as five stars. Um, obviously, we can make any of these um, mandatory fields if we wanted them to. Okay, and then I'm going to add another one. This time I'm going to do another rating. Um, but this time it's going to be option um, one rating. I did that the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. Um, in theory, that should be option one. So I might actually just change that to make sure we follow the logic here. Um, option one. Okay, so we have a series of five questions in our form, um, but each of those questions flow through slightly differently, okay, using branching. So what we want to do now do is come back to our question one, go back to into our branching, um, and this time our answers of these two things uh, are, you know, our colors of red and green. We want to send them to our option one rating option one rating there and um, our option two for our colors we want to go to option two rating and obviously this makes absolutely no sense because why would you create a form like this but i'm just trying to give you guys uh, a bit of an understanding of how branching works and then at the end um, we want to make sure that each of these rating options um, go to the end of the form Okay, um, and that basically means you're not going to have crossover between your branches and you're going to keep it very clean and slick. Now, obviously, the more questions you add into this, the more complex your branching can be. Um, so, as I said before, make sure you have a good structure in your mind of how you want this to work and then go through each option um, and then create your branching um, as needed. Now, depending on how you want to do it, you can you can have the approach that I've done here where I set up question one and then I did a branch for each um, answer to that question. Um, or you could create one question and then do all of the branching for that single answer and then do uh, all your branching for another answer and then all your branching for another answer. So you can kind of keep things uh, in some kind of logical uh, and slick way. Um, so this is what we have so far in our example. Um, if I go back to the preview, now we click option one, we have our option one colors. If I click green, I then have the rating for option one. Now, if I click option two, I get the option two colors and I get the option two rating after I've selected a color and then I can submit, okay? And that's how branching works um, within Microsoft Forms. It's actually a pretty simple process uh, once you understand what is happening uh, and how Microsoft is applying the logic into that branching scenario. Um, and like I said before, the more complex you make these things, um, the more data that you're going to get fed from um, the people who are, you know, you're sending these forms out to, these surveys out to, uh, then you potentially pick all that up into Microsoft um, Power Automate or Flow, um, and then actually do something with the information that you've got back, which is why I actually prefer uh, Microsoft Forms over something like SurveyMonkey, because you're in control a lot more of that data. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys found this useful. If you did, uh, you know what to do. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.